You can get the cards you need for today's Budget Magic deck and support the show from this episode's sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just follow the link in the description box down below. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we are heading to Modern to play one of the super powerful, newly unbanned cards, and I'll give you a hint, it is not a Jace deck. I thought about building 59 basic islands in one Jace because that would be our entire budget, but I figured that deck probably wouldn't actually work out in practice. Instead, we're playing a Bloodbraid Elf deck. I'm calling this one Green Red Haste Braid. Basically an ultra aggressive green red zoo type list with blood braid being our top end and getting in tons of damage out of nowhere so as you can see 101 bucks in the paper world i was 99 dollars when i first built it so it must have crept up a little bit people still buying their blood braid elves 42 digs on magic online so not a bad price for a deck that is surprisingly powerful a quick reminder before we break down green red haste braid for modern if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy budget magic in general it it would be amazing of you if you could take a second click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and the site for free so let's talk green red haste braid starting with the namesake blood braid elf so blood braid elf is our most expensive card probably our most powerful card as well basically it comes down as a 3-2 with haste that's hopefully bringing with it maybe another 3-2 with haste our most powerful hits in this deck are more hasty creatures that's what we're kind of trying to do we're looking to curve out from one mana up to four mana blood braid elf cast blood braid elf and hopefully just win the game that turn on turn four so for example we Cast our Blood Braid Elf, probably our best hit on a lot of board states is on Crop Crasher. So we get a 3 2 with haste, and we get another 3 2 with haste. And on Crop Crasher can make one of our opponent's creatures not block if we exert it. So our opponent has a Tarmogoy for a Tassiger, a Grimag Angler, a Dash Shadow, whatever. We're getting in for six damage, even through a blocker, which is a huge chunk of life, especially if we start curving out on turn one. Earthshaker kind of kind of like a mini on Crop Crasher. Not as good because it can only make a small creature not block, but still very relevant against a lot lot of decks in the format, making a Dark Confidant, a Ornithopter, something like that, not block. Plus, it has the upside of coming back from the graveyard in the late game. If we run into control, opponent finds a Supreme Verdict, getting back the Eternalizer Shaker Kenra as a 4-4 with haste can often help us close out the game. Apart from our camp block hits, we have just some more hasty stuff. So Bogart Ram Gang gives us just another really fast threat. 3-3 three, three, haste wither for three. Again, kind of like on Crop Crasher, that six points of hasty damage out of nowhere on turn four is what we're trying to set up. Strangle Root Geist is kind of like a backup Earthshaker Kenra. Doesn't make something not block, but it does come back for the graveyard really easily. We have a lot of weird wrath protection and removal protection in the deck with Earthshaker coming back from the graveyard, Strangle Root coming back from the graveyard. So unlike some aggro decks, we don't just scoop it up to a Supreme Verdict on turn four. We can kind of fight through that and keep pressuring our opponent even through the wrath. Otherwise, our one drops, Experiment One and Dryad Militant. And while this deck is all about the Blood Braid Elf, we really are looking to curve out. So we want to start off on turn one with Experiment One or Dryad Militant. And really our best draw is something like turn one Experiment One, Turn two, Earthshaker Kenra. Pump Experiment one, attack for four. Turn three, something like Bogart Ram Gang or Oncrop Crasher. Pump our Experiment one, attack for eight. That's 12 points of damage, and we have a ton of power on the board. Then turn four, Blood Raid Elf, cascade into another Oncrop Crasher, Bogart Ram Gang, Earthshaker Kenra, whatever. Attack for roughly a million and just kill our opponent on turn four. So we have a lot of ways of killing our opponent by turn four, by turn five, if things go poorly, even through some number of blockers and some number of removal spells because we have really weirdly resilient stuff. Dryad Militant might not look like much, but the natural graveyard hate is actually relevant against like Snapcaster decks, opponents milling over cards with things like Thought Scour to try to get Gurmag Angler on the battlefield. Having Dryad Militant just exiling all the instants actually is a pretty big upside. Good against Faithless Looting decks, Snapcaster decks, any sort of uh, Delvey type strategy. Otherwise, we have Scavenging News, just another graveyard hate spell. One of the most efficient two drops, has a lot of value, grows pretty big. Apart from our creatures, we have a couple copies of Don 
Domri Raid, which is pretty absurd in our deck, especially in slower matchups, because we have 30 creatures. So the plus one on Domri lets us reveal the top card of our library. If it's a creature, we get to put it in our hand. So about 50% of the time, we're going to be drawing a creature, probably a hasty creature that can immediately just attack and get in damage. Otherwise, we can use it to fight to get through even more damage with our creatures, and if we ever ultimate it, it's just pretty much game over. Our creatures are all absurd, with double strike and trample and hexproof and haste, really hard to lose after that. Otherwise, to force through the last few points of damage, we have Lightning Bolt and Rancor. So Rancor is super key to this deck. Being able to put this on a Strangle Root Geist and attack for four, or on a Bogart Ram Gang, attack for five with trample is really key. Keeps coming back from the graveyard, so we can just keep fireballing in our hasty creatures. Maybe our opponent's blocking, maybe they're dying, but that's fine because we get back to Ranker, we're drawing more Earthshaker Kenras, drawing more Strangle Root Guys, drawing more Ram Gangs and Bloodbraid Elf, so we just put the Rankers on the next creature, fire him in again, get in some more damage, Lightning Bolt goes straight to the opponent's face, can also get a blocker out of the way, Mana Base, pretty budget friendly, a little bit clunky, basically eight dual lands, a bunch of basic lands. As far as the sideboard, Pyroclasm for like Lingering Souls, other go wide decks that would be good at just blocking our stuff, Robes to get rid of Tarmogoyfs and Gurmag Anglers, Ancient Grudge Natural State to deal with Artifacts and Enchantments, Tormod Script for Graveyard, Stone Rain to attack Tron, and potentially Control decks as well, depending on the matchup. And that is Green Red Haste Braid for Modern, and that's our budget magic deck for this week. So if you like aggressive decks and just attacking, 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 attacking. I think you're going to like this one. We have a very legitimate, super fast skill, and I think this deck is actually fairly competitive, and it's a deck that you can build this deck and also upgrade using a lot of the most expensive cards. The Blood Braids, the Rankers, the Scavenging Oozes, maybe the Domries can show up in tier-ish builds or, like, more powered builds. Add in some fetch lands, maybe splash an additional color, play some whatever, Thalias and some Lightning Helixes, so there's ways you can build this into a more typical zoo deck, or even build up to getting Tarmogoyfs eventually, and build kind of like a tier 1 version of zoo, starting with a lot of the cards that show up in this deck. So, very upgradable, also very powerful as it is. Like, it's surprisingly effective, but probably better to just let you see the gameplay videos and see how it works, rather than telling you how effective it is. So anyway, let's get to the gameplay so you can see Green Red Haste Braid in action. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay, and I will talk to you soon. Alright, budget magic time. Playing some green, red... Ooh, we'll keep this. Playing some green, red, blood braid zoo, domri zoo. Green, red, something, something. Uh, let's see, so let's game trail. Reveal a mountain, and dryad militant. Pass the turn. Opponent. Blink moth nexus. Ornithopter, Mox Opal, Spring Leaf Drum, oh boy, and Steel Overseer. This is going to be a challenge. We do have some good sideboard cards, but we'll see. Let's get in with Dryad Militant. And our opponent, not sure we win the race against Affinity in game one. We do have Blood Braid though, and they don't. Play Scavenging Use, pass the turn. I think our best bet of winning against Affinity in game one is that our opponent attacks aggressively and doesn't really play around the fact we have so many hasty creatures. Signal Pest. And Volscourge. Oh boy. They just keep coming. Oh dear, and more? Oh my goodness. Holy. Well, that's Affinity for you, boys and girls. One land, all the action, and yup. I think that's game. So play Rootbound Craig. Play On Crop Crasher. Go attacking. The lifelink is going to make it really hard for us to keep up. Opponent's down to 11. Whew. So what's our possible outs here? That's champion. Keeps getting worse. Opponent gets in. Gains four. Yeah. Well, we do have some good sideboard cards. We should have more good sideboard cards than our opponent has good sideboard cards. And I don't think we even continue to play. We're just going to scoop it up. All right, so we get to bring in two Natural States, two Ancient Grudge, two Pyroclasm. Go down Domery Raid. Go down... Uh, what are we cutting? Maybe just Dryad Militant? 
it doesn't really do anything against their deck. It gives us less creatures, but without Domri, it doesn't really matter. All right, let's try it like that. We're on the play. And all right, I mean, no sideboard cards, but we can get off to a pretty hasty, aggressive start. If we draw into, like, Ancient Grudge, I think this hand could beat our opponent. Gonna depend on how fast their start is. If they have the, like, multiple creature to drop on turn one start, that's gonna be a challenge. Spring Leaf Drum. There's a zero drop. All right, not the most insane start. Well, play a Forest, play Strangle Root, get in for two. Next turn, we can Earthshaker Ranker, and then we can start on crop crashing the next turn. Blink Moth. Man, there's Cranial Plating. Well, let's race. Also, in fact, we need to draw a way to kill this Ink Moth before it kills us. Play Rootbound Crag. Play Earthshaker Kenra. Target the Ornithopter. Ranker Strangle Root. Ooh, Spell Pierce. Interesting. I don't think Spell Pierce is especially good against us, but it does save our opponent a couple points of damage. Hit our opponent to 14, pass the turn. Well, come on, sideboard guard. Oh, this Ink Moth is just so many points of damage. We're off to a decent start, but without being able to kill Plating or Ink Moth, it's just so easy to get one shot. Well, opponent's going to go normal damage. Interesting. Yeah, we need a Bolt, an Ancient Grudge, Natural State, anything like that. Pumps Blink Moth. Huh? I don't know what our opponent just did. I think they just reactivated the same Blink Moth. I think they were trying to pump, but messed up and instead activated again. So we're taking five. I'm glad they're not going on the Infect plan. Opponent pass. Oh, there's a Bolt too. That's good news. Now I feel like we might be in decent shape. On Crop Crasher, that turn was super sloppy for our opponent. I'm not really sure what they were trying to do, but hit our opponent down to seven and now I think we win. Pony had a bit of a slow start and a super sloppy turn. Oh, goodness. All right, Whip Flare. Strangaroo comes back. pony has got their sideboard card. Well, let's see. Oncrop Bolt can potentially still finish this game. Ink Moth. Opponent equips. Well, we're just going to take it and go for the win. We take six, in fact. Yup. And bolt our opponent's face on Crop Crasher. And that does it. Well, we did not draw sideboard cards, but our opponent, that one sloppy turn from our opponent was enough. All right. Well, that's pretty fortunate of us that we didn't draw our sideboard cards, but still managed to win. Ugh. Yeah, we can't keep this. Double bolt is nice, but no red mana. Ooh, okay. Wilkie Boos. This hand is very strange. We are a very aggressive deck, and this is not a very aggressive hand. But I think we can kind of play the control role. Mount and go. Ornithopter. Overseer. Hmm. Little worried of Spell Pierce. I think we just do it, though. I mean, if they got Spell Pierce, they got Spell Pierce. So let's Pyroclasm. Hope they don't have Spell Pierce. No Spell Pierce. All right. Now we have three Artifact Destruction spells still in hand. And we have an Ooze that can start eating and gaining life. Another Steel Overseer. Yep. Opponent passes. Wow. All the Artifact Destruction. Um, Yeah, let's just Natural State. Kill the Overseer. Play Scavenging Ooze. Pass the turn. What do you got, opponent? Plating. Okay. Well, we have an answer for that. Multiple answers for that. Opponent passes. Ranker. Well, get in with scavenging news. And pass the turn. Man, are we just going to ride this ooze to victory? Etched champion. I think that's okay. Opponent equips. So now we just ancient grudge cranial plating. Opponent loses Metalcraft, Ancient Grudge, at Champion. We would like a green source to grow this out of danger. Hmm. Now what? Now what? Now what? Well, let's get in with Ooze. Eat 
at champion. And I think we're going to pass. Leave up natural state. We just we would like to get ooze out of range of galvanic blast with metalcraft. There's ravager. Okay. Well, let's eat steel overseer. Ranker up our scavenging ooze. Go attacking. Opponent takes it. And yeah, we're going to pass. Hopefully we can win next turn. Uh, at champion. Well, this is a good time to kill Ravager. Opponent gets an edge champion. Eat the Ravager. Uh, now what? Well, I think this works. I think if we rank her, it forces our opponent to jump block. And this gets rid of the edge champion. Our sideboard cards came through like crazy. Our, we've kept enough artifacts off the battlefield. Opponents down to two, and I think we got there. Wow, taking down Affinity. This deck is actually oddly effective. I mean, I think we got lucky in game two that our opponent uh, kind of misplayed a little bit, but that game showed off the power of our sideboard guards for sure. All right, budget magic time. Playing some Bloodbraid Zoo. Ugh, 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 ugh. Well, we're going to keep this. It could work out. I really wish this wasn't a tap land, but we're playing budget. Sometimes you got the tap lands. So game trail go. Celestial Colonnade. This should be interesting. Well, experiment one. Ugh. This mana base. This mana base. Double game trail. Tap land go. Flooded strand. Opponent passing. Well, let's get in with experiment one. Play experiment one. Play experiment one. <laughs> experiment one, Tron. Achieved. Opponent cracks. Problem's gonna be a sweeper. Resolves. Yeah, we don't have very good protection from Supreme Verdict, and our start is a bit slower than we were hoping, thanks to all these tap lands. We have a lot of damage in hand. Ooh, opponent shocks themselves. We'll play a forest and on crop crasher. There's the counter. Well, get in with our experiment ones. Opponent down to 13. Field of Ruin. And there's the Wrath. Boo! Well, now we're drawing all of our lands. Let's Bogart Ram Gang. Get in, 4-3. Play the forest, pass the turn. Could use a Blood Braid. Blood Braid would be sweet. Polluted Delta, cracks it. Swamp. And Esper Charm. Oh, God. That's not good. Come on, Blood Braid off the top. It's a game trail. Well, get in with Ram Gang. Oh, that was brutal. Play game trail. Pass the turn. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. This should be so good, but it's not. Opponent passing. Well, play another Ram Gang. Go to combat. Attack with everything. Fires up, Colonnade. Pass the turn. Man, Lightning Bolt's good. Oh, we're so close. Ugh, Lingering Souls. Come on, Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. Another Colonnade. I'll play the Forest. Get back Earthshaker. Make a spirit, not block. Go attacking. Opponent blocks. Opponent blocks. Man. Ugh. If we didn't draw our play set of game trails, I think we would have won. Opponent has Jace. Can bounce our Earthshaker. Godless Shrine tapped. Opponent passing. Oh, dear. Oh, the Nightmare. This is pretty much the worst thing we could imagine. Pass the turd. Wow. Well, we sometimes talk about how much being budget actually costs your deck. And in this game, if we were non-budget, we 100% win. So this is one of those matches. Budget's weird like that. Like, a lot of the times, budget is not that problematic. 
But then you have games where you just straight up lose because you're playing a budget deck. As per charm, well, I mean, this is all we can do. Opponent probably has an answer because they just brainstormed. A turn too late. Snapcaster for logic not. One, two, one. One, two. Can we pay for this? One, one, two, three, four. I think we can pay for logic not. Are we going to win despite the clunkiness? If that's our opponent's only counter, then this actually steals us the game. Oh my god! We got off to the clunkiest of starts! Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Well, that was pretty impressive. Lingering Souls is super annoying. Stone Rain is kind of interesting. It would be putting us down threats, though. How do we get past Lingering Souls? We just got to attack through it. All right, run it back. Run it back. Wow, I thought we were done. All right, land heavy, but we'll try it. Colonnade. Oh, boy. Land heavier. Game trail. Reveal the forest. Play experiment one. Pass the turn. Opponent. Flooded strand. And passes. We'll play the forest. Play strangle root. Looks like our opponent has the counter. Watery Grave, untap, down to 17. I mean, I guess we still got a shock out of the deal, so that's something. Get him with Experiment 1. Opponent. Explosives, X1. But no follow-up. I'll play a Ranker. Opponent pass. Jeez. Flood City. We need a Blood Braid. We need a Blood Braid so much. Forest Go. Or Domri. Those are our two best cards. Oh my goodness, deck. Game Trail Go. Oh my... Ah! Ah! Only us can play a 20 land deck and get mana screwed into a... Or flooded into oblivion. There's a Domri. Would have been better a bit ago. Domri. Because now we got to deal with Lingering Souls. Tick up. Take an Experiment 1. Play Experiment 1. Play a forest. Play a ranker. Pass the turn. Opponent hitting their land drops. Eh, let's bowl the spirit. Oh, it feels so bad. This gives us an extra Dom reactivation, though. There's Lingering Souls. All the rankers. Well, take on Crop Crasher. Play on Crop Crasher. Alright, opponent blows the explosives. That's fine. Now we just get to double ranker on Crop Crasher. I mean, I guess rankers are our way of beating Lingering Souls. Hit our opponent to nine. Pass the turn. Man, if we're winning these games with the flood outs and how bad we've run, maybe this is just a good matchup. Opponent gets in. Hits Domri to one. Land. Cracks it. Island. We haven't even drawn a Blood Braid either. More Lingering Souls. And more Lingering Souls. All the souls. Well, take up Domri. Strangle Root Geist. Play Strangle Root Geist. Can we win here? I think we can. Ranker Geist. Attack Exert. Attack. And I think this is Exaxes. Oh my god! Oh! Oh my goodness! Wow! Wow! Okay! This deck, maybe this deck's legit. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That was pretty spectacular. All right, budget magic time. Playing some green red blood braid slash Domrizu and uh, this mana, Pluto Delta. I mean, we're gonna keep this. We have a lot of powerful cards. Unfortunately, our budget mana is keeping us from getting off to as fast of a start as we would like. Opponent, Pluto Delta, cracked. Grabs a Watery Grave, untapped down to 17. And, oh, Striped River went, ugh, dear me. So we're playing against Mono Blue Living End? Eh, maybe not. I would guess this is still Living End. Oh, okay. I don't know what this is. Something weird. Something weird in Graveyardy. With Rakdos, that's, yup. Alright, I think it's Living End. I'll play Rootbound Craig. 
play, I guess, Earthshaker Kenra. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. They're down to 12. Problem is they could potentially just living end here and win. So this is, this is a, this is spicy. Opponent. Oh, more cathartic reunions. So many cathartic reunions. Sepulta. Oh. Oh, this is a Soul Flayer deck. We'll play Rootbound Craig. Play Domery Raid. Take up Domery Raid. Take an Earthshaker. Get in with Earthshaker. If they can Soul Flayer here, though, I think we just die. Like, Flying First Strike, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Lifelink, and Hexproof. I don't think Hex... Yeah, Hexproof counts. And here's Soul Flayer. And... Yeah, that's just the game. Yup. All right. There's just nothing we can do about this. So we will... Fl double Strike, Flying Haste, Trample, Indestructible, Lifelink, Vigilance, yeah? Yup, yup, yup! Well? <laughs> Let's bring in our Tormod Crips. The deck is pretty inconsistent, but it did its thing there. And unfortunately... Oh, Tormod Script. Tormod Script is super sketchy graveyard hate. It's graveyard hate, but it's... It's sketchy graveyard hate. That's the downside. So... Um, against this deck, probably gonna go down Domery Raids. We just gotta be aggro. That is our best chance of of winning, is just aggro. We also have Scavenging Ooze, which actually is good Graveyard Hate. And I think we go down a Lightning Bolt and try it like that. So we really just want, like, a Scavenging Ooze. Okay. Well, this is a little frustrating in terms of how many tap lands we have, but we do have Graveyard Hate. So play Rootbound Craig. Play Tormod's Crypt, pass the turn. Actually, I think we just want to draw lands, honestly. That's probably our best draws. Island for our opponent. And Serum Visions. If we can draw lands to leave up Scavenging Ooze, that should work in our favor. If we can, like, one-shot with Tormod's Crypt to get rid of the graveyard, then use Scavenging Ooze to just keep the graveyard clean. Or at least keep the graveyard clean of Soul Flayer targets. We can deal with a 4-4. Like, that's not the end of the world. The problem is when it has lifelink and first strike and vigilance and uh let's experiment one play a game trail tapped because budget pass the turn opponent black cleave cliffs we did draw land it does come into play tapped unfortunately but it is a land dark blast okay that's a little annoying land please all right that works so forest play scavenging use immediately eat the dark blast pass the turn that's pretty helpful now we might be in semi okay shape i mean we have multiple graveyard hate spells going we would like this ooze to live cathartic reunion called in the netherworld i guess can get back this rag mutt okay combo i guess we're not gonna spend our tormod script opponent passes another ooze is good Game Trail tapped. Get in with Scavenging Ooze. Play Experiment 1. Eat Experiment 1. We want the Ooze to be out of range of Is It Charm, which we saw last game. And we want to leave up an activation. Ooh, they did have the Is It Charm too. Draw a 2, discard 2. Opponents. Alright, there's a comma. Well, we will exile the comma. Opponent's not playing many lands, apparently, or not finding many lands. Exile's a comma. Untap. Earthshaker Kenra. Well, let's just Earthshaker Kenra. Pump Experiment 1. Go attacking. Hit our opponent for 8. Down to 10. And yeah, I think we'll just pass. Not really worried about our opponent just delving out a Soul Flayer if there's no creatures. Serum Visions. Opponent, top and top. And Faithless Looting. And Dark Slug Shores. Well, let's eat Stinkweed Imp. Man, are we gonna... We just need a Haste Creature, I think. Eat Faithless Looting. Come on, Haste Creature. Bloodbraid? Bloodbraid would work. Mountain. Well, go attacking. Hit our opponent to one. One point of damage short. Maybe we should have been more aggressive last turn. Play the mountain. Pass the turn. Opponent. Manamorphose. Okay. 
Add some mana. This is a spicy way of doing things. Faithless looting. All right, so we need to Tormod script. So this should put our opponent short of, yeah, of being able to cast... Wow! That Tormod script, I think, saved us. They were a card short from being able to Soul Flayer and win. Wow! Oh, and our opponent scooped it up. Wow, that was so close. Oh my goodness. Wow, 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 wow. All right, we survived. Graveyard hate was good enough. Well, run it back. That's that's our formula for success. Graveyard hate, fast clock. Those are the ways we can stay in this game. Ah, oh, it's so scary. Once I get the big lifelinker down, things are just so sketchy. Okay, I mean, if our opponent has the Nutter Butters, it, we, we could be too slow. We have our Ooze. We do not have a Tormod script. Opponent's doing some mulliganing. It is an inconsistent deck. We played something similar, and it is inconsistent. Our clock is not super fast. Well, let's just Game Trail tapped past the turn. We're really counting on this Ooze living land for our opponent. Cracks it. Blood Crypt. Oh, boy. Does this mean they have... Yup, Cathartic Reunion. <laughs> Discards land Soul Flayer. Called... Or land... Soul Flayer called to the Netherworld. Gets back Soul Flayer. Okay. Well, let's Forest and Earthshaker Kenra. Not really much upside to playing Ooze right this second because it can't exile anything anyway. Island for our opponent. Manamorphose. Stinkweed Imp. Sure. Well, let's get in with Earthshaker, Kendra. Opponent blocks. Yep. We will forest scavenging ooze and just eat the Stinkweed Imp. Pass the turn. Hopefully we're keeping our opponent pinched enough that they can't just beat us. Stinkweed plays a land. We'll play a forest... Play Dryad Militant. And pass the turn. We're just going to start eating the graveyard here. <laughs> Is this the... Yep. The Sad Soul Flare. Well, that we can deal with. Don't really care about just a 4-4. Four, four. Eat the graveyard. Eat the graveyard. Play a Mountain. Play Bogart Ram Gang. Play Ranker on the Ram Gang. Go attacking. Oh, boy. I think we might be getting there. We got got. <laughs> we got got super hardcore in game one. But I think things are shaping up. All right. Let's just pass. I guess our opponent's still at 14. It doesn't look like they have mana that can cast Zapolta. Is it Charm? Draw two, discard two. Ugh. Oh, this is awkward. Oh, no. What do we do? Yeah, I think we gotta eat Soul Flare. Actually, Dryad Militant Exiles, is it Charm? That's a, actually a big deal here. That's less Delve Fuel. So maybe we could have waited. I guess land. If they discarded Creature, Creature, land, they would have still got us. Whew, all right. They get back the Soul Flare. Sure. Opponent passing. Well, let's Ram Gang. Go attacking with Ram Gang. Opponent takes it. Down to 11. Pass the turn. All right. We're pretty close to just winning next turn. Thoughtseize has a couple of options. This Dryad Militant has actually been pretty helpful in this matchup. Surprisingly help. Surprisingly helpful. We have a lot of ways of taxing the graveyard, I guess. And our opponent scoops it up. Whoo, boy. All right, we got there. We have not cast a, did not cast a Bloodbraid Elf, but we got there. Opponent got to show us some spice in game one, but our graveyard hate came through. Games two and three. All right, budget magic time. Playing some green, red, Bloodbraid, hasty zoo. Uh, I guess we keep this. We would love to just find an untapped green source. A lantern. Hmm. 
Well, come on, no bridges. No bridges. No bridges. All right. <laughs> Game trail go. We don't really have a way to deal with lantern stuff in the main deck. River. Oh. Oh. Uh. Okay. Here comes the mill rocks. Opponent passes. We'll play a mountain and let's just earth shaker. Get in for two. I mean, this is all we can do is try to kill our opponent before they find a bridge. Once they get down bridge, life gets very complicated. Glimmer void. Uh, here comes bridge. Uh, they're going to work for a lantern. That's still pretty bad. Oh, dear. We have another strangle root on top. That's not ideal. Well, rank her up, Earth Shaker. Get in. Hit our opponent down to 13. Pass the turn. Opponent mills. Picks us on top. Mills. Bobble on top. Mills. There's bridge. All right, that's game. Um, gonna double check the deck list. I'm pretty sure that we are just literally drawing dead here, but we will see. We have to deal 13 points of damage. Opponents empty-handed. Ways of dealing damage. Yeah. Uh, we have four lightning bolts, so we are going to scoop it up. We even if somehow we drew all of our lightning bolts, there it's still a point of damage short. Good news is natural states come in, ancient grudges come in. Gives us a little bit more interaction. Go down. <sighs> is Domri good enough? Probably not. Go down Domri, and go down. I mean, I think we just have to be aggro. Like, aggro, hope we can deal with a bridge, and we got a shot? Like, our deck can deal a lot of damage. Can we get in the damage before they get the bridge lock in? This game will go longer, no matter what, because we actually have outs in our deck now, after sideboarding. What are our worst cards in this matchup? That was also, like, kind of a risky keep with the guys, although, with how that went, I don't think we were winning anyway. Maybe we just go down, like, Crasher, Crasher. Try it like that. All right, we're on the play. Let's get a nice aggro start. Jeez. Only one land, and it comes into play tapped. I think we got a ship. I think it's just too slow. Ugh. All right. Ranker. We'll keep it on top. It gives us something to do next turn. Forest and experiment one. I mean, it's going to be about finding, finding a way to deal with that first bridge. Glimmer Void, and Kodak Shredder, and Mox Opal, and Mills the Ranker. Lightning Bolt, not super helpful. Get in with Experiment 1. Hit our opponent, down to 19. Opponent, thinking over their options. Spire of Industry, Lantern of Insight. Oh, we're drawing more lands, hooray. Oh my goodness. All right, well, this one, is, the mulligan got us. I'm pretty sure we're just, there's, well, we'll see. I mean, we're just going to draw nothing forever. That is what Lantern does. More lands on top. Well, get in for one. Yeah, this isn't going to cut it. Play, rootbound Craig, pass the turn. Not what we were hoping for, start-wise. Opponent mills a land, finds ancient stirrings. And there's the bridge. Well, we're not going to scoop, but we also... What are our percents right now? Two? One? It is minuscule. But we're not technically drawing dead, so we won't we won't scoop up the game, but our odds of winning this game are incredibly low. Uh, Bogart Ram Gang. Opponent can mill that, though. Well, get in for one. Actually, I don't even think they care about... They might not even care about milling our creatures... Maybe we should have just kept the one-lander. I mean, it's a horrible one-lander, but... I mean, it's a one-lander. It had a lot of good cards, but it's so risky, especially against Lantern. Like, if they just go Lantern and Kodak Shredder, they can probably keep us on one land forever. Galactic Brutality. Yeah, we'll bolt your face. No, they were draining anyway. Eh, doesn't really matter. More lands on top. Here comes War of Invention. For a Pixis. Yeah... 
opponent mills themselves, and this one's looking super over. I think we're, yeah, another we're on top. We're getting pretty close to the point where we just scoop up the game. Well, that was brutal. Yeah, I think we're to the point where we scoop. Well, <sighs> all right, we won't scoop, we won't scoop. I don't want to get yelled at. I guess we're like, I don't even know what the percentage is. There's a very, very tiny percent that somehow we win. But it is... I mean, I think the percent's basically gone with them having a whir, and there's another bridge on top. Yeah, there's not really... Like, we have to somehow get lucky enough to hit... We need to hit multiple artifact destruction spells. Actually, three. And here goes one. So yeah, we're just... We're dead. Opponent exiles artifact destruction... Mills, Blood Braid, we're drawing a land. Get in for one. Pass the turn. Yeah, I think once we see one more artifact destruction spell gone, then we can concede and y'all can't yell at me. Because then we literally are drawing dead. I guess right now there's like some 0.0001% chance that like we just string together every single spell somehow, but... For all intents and purposes, it's over. Pass the turn. We can't play creatures because it pumps experiment one, and technically it's getting in a point of damage. Opponent, more mill rocks. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait till one more artifact destruction spell goes down, but opponent gets empty handed. Another Kodak Shredder. We draw a land. Play the land. Pass the turn. Yeah, this has been brutal. I mean, I think that this is probably a hard matchup, but I don't think it's unwinnable yeah here goes pixis for ancient grudge and we will scoop it up there goes nature uh natural state as well so yeah we're back to drawing dead Whew. well that didn't work out all right budget magic time playing some green red blood braid heisu in modern and eh, all right we'll give this a go uh, no one drop, but we have a lot of powerful stuff. Four is for our Ibu opponent, and passes. Well, game trail go. Domri could also be pretty sweet. In theory, we can go like hasty two drop, hasty three drop, or we just Domri on three. We'll see what our opponent does. <laughs> Secure drive out there. Opponent said, please don't lock me out. Must have seen last week's budget magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gotta put the fear in him. I wonder if that's like an upside of being me when it comes to playing magic. If people are just like naturally afraid. Is this mono green land destruction? Oh my god. That would be sad. Opponent passes. Well, let's just forest and I think we just Domri. Take up Domri. Oh no. We whiff. I guess, in our deck, I think Domri is exactly 50-50 to draw us a card. I think we have 30 creatures exactly. Pass the turn. Not going to attack. Oh, I feel something bad is about to happen to us. I think this is mono green land destruction. Dear me. Dear me. Opponent, get in there for us. I mean, I guess in some ways we're good against land destruction. Oh. What's happening to us? Primal Command? Acid Moss. All right. Well, that could have been worse. Opponent gets a forest. So we tick up Domri. Take an Earthshaker Kendra. Play a Mountain. Play Earthshaker Kendra. Go attacking. Eat Sakur Tribe Elder. And pass the turn. We're down to one red source. Man, Imagine ultimating Domri. <laughs> Creatures have double strike, trample, hexproof, and haste. Seems reasonable. <sighs> Plow under. Yup. Thanks, opponent. Uh, so much fun to be had. Well, replay the forest. Take up Domri. We know it's a forest. Because it just went on top of our deck. Earthshaker, Kenra. Go attacking. Pass the turn. I mean, in theory, Oncrop Crasher could close out the game next turn. In practice. All right. Gain seven. Put Domri on top of our deck. We'll play the forest. Play Oncrop Crasher. 
<laughs> I mean, our opponent is annoying us like crazy, but I feel like we still might be getting there. And our opponent scoops it up. All right. Well, they put a lot of lands on top of our deck, but, man, we don't have a single sideboard card for this matchup, do we? I guess Roast. Roast might be worth it over, like, hmm, maybe, like, a couple of Ram Gangs. Try it like that. Pony definitely annoyed us like crazy. Aggro seems like a one of the harder matchups from what I remember with Mono Green Land Destruction. Ooh, boy. All right. This we like. This is a nice, aggressive start. Four is for our opponent. And Arbor Elf. Ugh. Well, game trail, reveal a forest, play Dryad Militant. Actually, <sighs> Dryad Militant, let's play Experiment 1. That's gotta be right. Dryad Militant is relevant, stopping our opponent from, like, looping Primal Commands. But we're probably spending this turn killing Arbor Elf anyway. Sucker, Tribe Elder. Opponent... Passing. Play the mountain. Roast the Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. We just gotta make sure they can't do crazy ramping to Primal Command. Next turn, our mana's a little annoying, but we can, like, maybe Earthshaker plus Dryad Militant. Bonus Axe. Gets a forest. There's a land. More Sakura Tribe Elders. Yup. Opponent passes. Well, play the forest. Play Earthshaker, Kenra. Make it so Sakura Tribe Elder can't block. Getting down Domri would be nice, but I think it's more important to get in damage, number one. Also, get this Militant down to make sure our opponent can't get back Primal Command or Plow Under from the graveyard. So play Militant. Opponent cracks. I think I'm most afraid of Hornet Queen. Hornet Queen. Not sure how we kill our opponent through a Hornet Queen. Looping Thrag Tusk is pretty bad too. We don't have any actual removal at the moment. Six mana. Arbor Elf. And. Is it Plow Wonder or Primal Command? Game Trail on top. Search for a creature. It's the Hornet Queen. All right, Hornet has Hornet Queen and one unknown card. We definitely need to play Domri, fight Arbor Elf, go attacking. So now we're basically just hoping our opponent doesn't have land. All right, it looks like not Hornet Queen. Oh, is it more Primal Commands? That's pretty brutal, too. All right, blows up our land. Uh, are we going to find a way to get in these last points of damage? Gets a land. So we know Hornet Queen's coming next turn. Oh, does this do it? Is this Does this steal the game? Pumps? Oh, my goodness. Wow! The one creature in our deck that wins here. Pumps Experiment 1. Wow. That is Exaxes, I believe. Unless our opponent's got something for two mana, and we got there. I forgot about Boulevard Ram game. That's 10 damage. Wow. That was a pretty impressive beatdown performance. I think we're never, ever going to cast a Bloodbraid Elf. Just not happening. <laughs> I mean, we're just like, we. that's the most expensive card in our deck, and we did not cast it once. We could just drop it. Cut, like, $50 off of the budget and still go for one. <laughs> uh, sweet. So what do we learn this week about Green Red Haste Braid in Modern? And good news, bad news. So good news is we went 4-1. and one. We got maybe a little lucky against Affinity. Our opponent kind of activated the wrong land one turn. Probably should have just been ink mothing us. So it's possible that we would have lost that. But still, we beat some pretty legit decks. Blue-White Control. We beat Affinity. So we beat some good decks. We went 4-1. and one. We lost a Lantern. Lantern is a tricky matchup. We can beat Lantern. I mean, we have a fast clock. We have artifact destruction. In theory, if we can just draw our sideboard cards, kill the bridge, kill our opponent, we can win. So I don't think it's an unwinnable matchup, but it's definitely a 
challenging matchup because Bridge is super good against us. We don't have enough direct damage to really kill our opponent very consistently once there's a bridge out, so it's really dependent on us having the right artifact destruction spells to deal with at least one, maybe two bridges, and then we can win it, but it's still definitely a hard matchup. So anyway, record-wise, 4-1. and one. The bad news is... We did not cast a single Bloodbraid Elf in our entire league, but maybe that's actually good news. Bloodbraid is the most expensive card in this deck. It is, like, almost a half of the cost, at least a third of the cost by itself. So, in theory, you could play an ultra-budget build of this, just green-red haste, without Bloodbraid Elf, and it literally, we would have still went 4-1 if Bloodbraid Elf was not in our deck. Like, we didn't cast it a single time. Not a single time. So, I think that Bloodbraid is still powerful, and it's still good, but apparently just green, red, hasty, beat down, make your stuff not be able to block is pretty good in its own right because we won without casting a single Bloodbraid. So I don't know if that means that Bloodbraid is unnecessary. I still feel like if we kept playing the deck and we played 20 matches, 50 matches with the deck, we would end up being pretty happy that we had Bloodbraid in our deck because there's going to be situations where it's great and there are going to be games where we draw it. Like that's the weird thing about a five game sample size is sometimes you just don't draw your namesake card. Like, that's definitely a thing that happens in Magic. You just run oddly. The good news, like we said, though, is we still won even without arguably our best card in our entire deck. So if you want to play an even cheaper build of this, just drop the Blood Braids, throw in some more one drops, maybe another burn spell, a Tarka's Command, I don't know, any aggressive type red green thing. There'll be a ultra budget list, probably without Blood Braid, in the article. So make sure to check that out as well. I'll follow the link below. So anyway, Green Red Haste Braid, probably poorly named since we didn't draw any Blood Braids, but definitely a legitimately powerful deck cruising past people. So if you're looking for a sweet aggro deck or want to take advantage of Blood Braid Elf being unbanned in Modern, definitely give it a shot because I feel like this deck is pretty upgradable towards like a Naya Zoo type strategy. So there's a lot of things you can do to improve it. And even in its condition right now is just straight Green Red Haste Beatdown it's competitive enough to win a lot of games, so if you like aggro, like beating down, want to make use of Bloodbraid Elf, this is a pretty good budget option, I think, for modern. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.